Hey guys, how's it going? We are starting off season six with a couple tier lists. We have a PVE tier list if you want to check it out. I will add a link to it in the description and also in the top right hand corner if you want to check it out. This is specifically for the season six PVP. Okay, not forget about the past seasons. This is starting with a clean slate, jumping into the PVP. All right, so we are going to do, we're going to start with tanks. And I think tanks are probably in the best spot they've ever been in as far as PvP goes. They aren't... As far as I can tell, they're not great. But they aren't down here in the trash anymore. I think they're... Being the only class with... Um, with spiky armor... And all the other additional mutations that have been added. And I think they'll probably come on as the season goes. As people play with them more. Uh, it's probably one of the classes that the general community has the least experience with, right? The, or it would be in one of, in the bottom for time spent on, just because they've been so bad for so long. So I think probably a good spot for them is right here in the middle. I think they're not awful. They're not a class that I would say avoid. I think they're a class that's kind of, I would, I would try them out and experiment, right? Um, kind of almost like an experimental uh, thing right here in the middle. Don't be afraid to use them but uh, you're going to probably have some mixed results, right? Inconsistent results. And now we go on to... Oh, and they also work still. Uh, whether you want to try and main them, I, I haven't done that, but also very good supplemental for your build too with their taunting and everything, oh, like their mass taunt with the heart... Uh, with, uh, with the 25% health reduction. That can help a ton. So, yeah, I think, that, I think they're in a bit good spot uh right now and we'll move on to cultists which are consistently and they have been and they probably were even super strong before people realized they were super strong they have been consistently s tier i think probably since uh energy vampirism was introduced in season three i think that was when it was introduced uh cultists are probably up here in s tier i think that they're the easiest class to run uh, you can go straight through the PvE experience and into the PvP. You don't have to do anything fancy with it, right? You can just run your cultists and be really strong with it with Hail Satan and, and the current setup, not having res on all the teams and not having delayed pain on or on all the classes. I mean, it just gives them so much. Plus, they have tolerance, right? They have additional tolerance. Because there's a lot of, uh, if you want to play, if you want to call it playing chicken with the with your opponents, right? Uh, as far as playing the, the silence card on people, it's almost like playing chicken. And they have the the advantage there because you can you have tolerance in the overall mutation tree, and they also have a tolerance mutation. They're just really really strong. Whether you want to play physical build or magic damage build, they're strong. Um, let's go into fighters my favorite class again here we go I don't know if they'll ever come back to their former glory I know the devs have tried you know they've added a couple mutations and I still feel like maybe you know like they've got one that even pairs with cultists so I mean maybe maybe there's something out there that we just haven't discovered but in the current landscape I, I, I've tried fighters I just can't make them work that good efficiently in pvp and unfortunately they are going to be down here in the d crash tier again they until i'm proven other uh proven wrong they are uh they're trash they're they're no good right um unfortunately and i think in this season they're even weaker than uh they're, they're arguably weaker than they've ever been because we don't because we don't have uh vamp we don't have a lot of different things they can they don't have res so like if they get nuked they're nuked right um <laughs> they're they're toast healers um again i just don't think heal i think healers actually are probably they're in the same spot they usually are right they're down here in the trash tier um you're not gonna i, I can't see many uses for them in pvp effective uses that are going to help you win your league or move up in a build like you're not they're not even like something that I experiment with more. They're, they're just something I throw in as an addition to try and help keep my main troops alive in PVE. So PVP, I wouldn't, I don't even consider them as a, as an option really. 
and you might be able to find something right but it's it's not it's something that you're gonna have to invest time in to find and now we move on to eggheads eggheads are probably probably uh this season's uh up and coming class if you want to call them that right they they've uh things have the way things have shifted this season they've probably taken a big step forward i think and i said that before in my uh in my state of the game uh, video that I did. And I think that they're part of the meta. I think they're an easier class to run. They do rely, you wanna try and get that, that uh, zombie lab mutation on floor two to make them work, right? You give you the, the big boost on towers getting built. But they're the only class with delayed pain and delayed pain for a long time has been considered the strongest mutation in the game, I think. And uh, I think that that alone makes them that makes them a S tier class. And remember, this isn't just for grandmasters. This is for people in Greenhorn. I think if you do a if you run through and do an egghead build, if you haven't, I highly suggest it. Um, I think you could probably you can probably wipe through uh, anybody that isn't running cultists, mages, any of the stuff that's going to be up here in the top. Right. Speaking of mages, here we are here. Um, the only team with the only class with res I'm calling them teams the only class with res and uh i think that it's i think that alone right makes them really strong and the magic damage is still there it's super strong energy vamp is something you can literally buy out of the shop it's available for any class that does magic damage right which is a huge benefit because all the physical damage built uh classes lost lost their vampirism except for fencers right so i think mages are s tier also i i honestly believe that i truly believe that they're s tier i think we've got three classes that are way above um as far as consistency and ease of use reliability uh you're not gonna have to experiment a ton with them to get them off the ground that's just my opinion anyway. Now we go on to tricksters. Uh, these guys, this class was the class that inspired the two tier list videos, really. I should have been doing this before, maybe, but I think now it's it's really just come, like it's really just opened up my eyes how the big, the big difference in this class. They are not and never really have been great in PvP. For whatever reason, right? I think most of it is because they have to get, they have to cross that gap to do their damage. So strong in PVE, but PVP, I would say that they are. I'm gonna say that there's some, they're down here. I'm gonna put them into the high C tier. You could say maybe low B tier. I just don't think that they they're. You're not going to be able to, I don't think you can really run it without doing, pulling some fancy tricks. Let's put it that way. You can't just run a trickster class in there and do all tricksters or you're, you're going to, you're going to have to mix them with throwers or some variation to, to close that gap. Mega newbie. Consistently strong underrated i think it sounds like a meme it was a meme when i first started making content around this game i thought it was a meme i thought it was hilarious and terrible i just under misunderstood that it's this is considered a summon so your whole summon tree all those mutations that you think might just be for tentacles it also applies to your mega newbie which makes it incredibly strong and for that reason, I think Mega Newbie deserves to slide up here into A tier. I think if you if you're struggling to get into a position in your league, whether it's amateur, vet, whatever, even grandmasters will try out Mega Newbies. It can it can move you from the bottom of your league to the to the mid top part of your league in a in a hurry. I think I finished fifth place in a league uh, one time with a Mega Newbie. It was a it, and. And it was, I was blown away. So yeah, I think A tier. There's not much to say about them because they're pretty, they're pretty straightforward, right? They're just, they're one big hunk of human meat. 
Shooters. They are an interesting one. I think shooters have fallen the furthest of any class. I mean, fighters have fallen, but they fell right out. They fell off right after season two. And and they've they've steadily just kind of I've come to terms with the fact that they've been worse than what I thought they were. But shooters have been consistently strong since the game came out into early access. And now they are officially weak. They are they are very, very weak. Um just not having as much they don't have they're squishy and they don't have res they don't have vampirism they don't have uh trying to think here what else they lost they lost a lot so for that reason i think you can still run them and they and they're good as an addition right you can run them as an additional class but i'm gonna say that they're they're i'm gonna put them down here probably ahead of tricksters but they they used to be a consistent s tier a tier they've always been up there they've fallen they're i think really more of a, a, a you could argue that they should be over here or even in trash most most builds i would just suggest using a, a few few of them adding them just so you can get a little bit more attack speed on your main troops fencers fencers another consistent a consistently good class that actually probably offers the the most versatility right because they have good they have a fantastic magic uh attack with uh, spinning fencers but also their physical is good um i think you can i think you can do some things with them that are very very interesting the problem being you have to cross the gap still right and the gap being between your team and the other team there's a there's a bit of a a bit of a leap there that they have to cross before they get nuked <laughs> Is a lot of like if you're going up against again if you're pairing up against these guys there's a good chance you're going to get nuked before you make it i would say and and i want to say that they're a tier but i'm going to put them down here in b tier high b tier because i think that they, that's just the, a better spot more fair spot for them based on what they rely on and what they need around them but you can't just do a straight fencer build i don't think and be very successful Throwers. Throwers, I think throwers are a great class. I think they're in a great spot and not just um, on their own, but they also can be, this is the class that makes a lot of other classes better, right? This is, this is the class that can make your fencers better. This is the class that can make your, fen your fencers, your tricksters, your, your fighters, if you want to try fighters. Uh, it can make all of those classes better just by throwing right but the reason it goes up here is because because of that it relies those builds it's actually going to go here ahead of the mega newbie i think because these classes rely on it so much to be efficient and and actually do what you want them to do and survive i think that that's important for, for the thrower class and even if you just want to do a throwers throwing throwers build it's incredibly strong uh, to have that right it's a strong build and it would beat all of these classes down here i believe right i i honestly believe that it would beat those classes you might not beat the mega newbie but i think that it takes the spot ahead of mega newbie just based on the fact that that it actually works as a really good addition to other classes whereas mega newbie it's a bit debatable you can you can mix and match a couple things here and there with it right and i've seen people have some success but overall there's not much else you can do with it. It is what it is. It's a pretty simple build. Guys, I think that's it. We've got we've got the three three here, and I put them, I would say they're significantly better than everything else. Um yeah, so we got cultists, eggheads, mages at the top. And we got rowers, mega newbie in the A tier. I can't believe that that's my A tier, but that's my A tier. That's where we're at. B is fencers and tanks. I think tanks are, are in a good spot and the best spot they've been in and surprisingly above shooters. I think just based on the fact that I think that they've they're more versatile. They offer more than shooters do at this point. And then we got shooters. These are going to be classes that I don't really recommend trying to build around a whole lot. Shooters you maybe can work, but I doubt it. Uh, in most cases, you're going to get melted. Fencers rely a lot on on a lot of other things. Fighters 
If you make a good fighter build, let me know about it. <laughs> and healers are just healers. I mean, healers should uh, be way, way down here somewhere, right? Way off the board as far as PvP goes. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for all the support this community has given me. I will uh, put a, if you want to check out our PvE tier list, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's also going to be uh, right here. This is the video right here. And I will catch you on the next one, guys.